Hey guys, today we're going to be cooking my favorite comfort food and I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about why I started cooking. Hey guys, it's Luke here, aka Lactose Soy Milk, also known as Yang Lu. And today we're going to be making some egg and tomato rice. And I'm also going to be telling you a little bit about why I even started cooking and why I'm so passionate about it. Um, before I do that though, this is a gentle reminder for those of you to go and wash your rice and plug it in because your parents are coming home right now and they're going to be very upset if your rice is not cooked. So go and do that. But back to the story. Um, I was someone who at a very young age uh, moved around a lot. I honestly don't really have any memories of my parents until maybe grade three or four. And that's because as a kid, we moved from China to Singapore, to back to China, to Canada. And ultimately my parents decided we can't be putting our kids through this. So we want to finally establish a base. They decided to settle down in Toronto. And during that time, I lived with my grandfather and my sister lived with my mom's family. So at that time, food didn't really mean anything to me. I was very spoiled. My grandfather cooked me whatever I wanted, and I was just kind of chasing the next exciting thing. I would be watching a ton of KFC commercials, and I wanted to eat those things. Oh, before I say that, say hello to my little cherry tomato plant, Gertrude. She is a cutie. Um, anyway, I didn't really resonate with food that much. It was kind of something that was tasty to me, and I was a very picky eater. Um, fast forward to when I was in grade four, I finally moved to Canada with my parents, and I started to realize what it meant to not be um, super spoiled, and I had to eat what my parents put in front of me. Um, I had to study hard, and I actually had to put in the work. Um, and, you know, similar to a lot of other ethnic kids, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this, me and my parents, we didn't really connect on a lot of items, you know, we didn't really talk about what hobbies I had, we didn't talk about much besides, you know, my career goals, um, what's going on in school. Um, but one thing that we always kind of connected and resonated with was at the dinner table. We always had dinner together, we always had great conversations while we ate. And um, it kind of made me realize my parents were a lot more human. My dad's an engineer, he is a calculated and not very, you know, personable individual. My mom's an accountant, kind of a similar story, but you know, a little bit more empathetic on that front. But whenever we sat and whenever we ate, um, we really connected on it. My parents really always made sure I had a full plate, that I had enough rice, I was going to school full of energy, I had lunches, I had snacks, and they really cared about um, the food I was consuming. And something else I started to notice a little bit more, especially in grade four, once I started living in a different city with my dad because of his job, um, that this engineer who builds extravagant machines, who designs really complex um, workflows, he was also very interested in food and he really paid attention to very small things. It really showed in his favorite dish, which was egg and tomato noodle soup. Um, I always noticed that when he was cutting the green onions, he would separate them, um, separate the whites and the greens. I noticed he had a very methodical way of cutting the tomatoes to the equal sizes. And I knew this because when I didn't do so, um, words would be exchanged. Um, and I noticed that he paid a lot of attention to what he did with food. And I started becoming a little bit more interested as well. My dad worked a little bit later and I came home from school at maybe four or five and I started becoming interested in cooking and I started um, connecting with my dad on that. He showed me how to make his favorite dish, showed me how that the whites and the greens should be separated and the whites are a little bit more oniony so you can caramelize them before adding in the tomatoes and that would kind of give it a more aromatic feel. He showed me the greens were a little bit more like a herb and they were perfect for topping, a little bit milder, but still very delicious and adds that extra freshness. He showed me why he cut the tomatoes to a certain size because when it's too small, the liquid will completely dissolve and you don't necessarily have as much texture. But when it's a little bit larger, you kind of get that better mouthfeel in the finished product. He showed me why it's important to scramble the egg and cook it before you actually even add in the tomatoes because um, the liquid of the tomatoes actually interferes with the cooking of the egg and it makes it a little bit less fluffy. And I started to realize there was a lot of thought and a lot of effort put into these weekly family meals. I always had dinner with my parents and I never realized 
it took a lot of time for them to make these meals. And although sometimes they weren't the best things to eat, especially in comparison to what I was used to with my grandpa cooking, it had a lot of love and it had a lot of attention put into it. And most importantly, these were two busy people that were taking time out of their day to nourish me and to make sure that I was okay, I could continue on. And through that thought, I started to realize my parents are a lot more human than I realized. So I started to realize the reason why they wanted me to go to all these classes, why they were a little bit more robotic was they wanted to ensure my survival. They wanted to make sure I was almost capable and took care of myself. And that's why I kind of really fell in love with cooking. I wanted to give back a little bit and I wanted to nourish them. I started in grade six officially, although when I was in grade four or five, I lived with my dad and I saw him cooking. In grade six, I started to be a little bolder and I tried to make some meals myself. Um, so one day I decided to cook up this egg and tomato rice uh, for my dad. And um, I did what I thought was exactly what he said um i caramelized the you know little onion whites um i cooked the egg before i did that removing the egg before adding in the onion whites and the tomatoes um and you know i cooked the noodles separately on the side um added the salted water and i really thought i was doing a good job to be honest i was thinking wow like master chef here i come um but the reality of it was a little bit different. The reality of it was I was making a mess in the kitchen. There was eggshells on the floor. The reality of it was I poured way too much salt into the noodles and they were absolutely completely salty. Um, the other reality of it was I, I had a lot of garbage on the floor and these were none of the things I realized. I was kind of living in my own little world thinking, oh man, my dad's gonna be so proud of this. Um, and that was until I realized the most important thing my dad told me, which was always taste your food. And I gave my finished product a taste. And I fully have no doubt saying this, that it is the most vile thing that's ever entered my mouth in my entire life. Um, and at that moment, I completely sobered up and I realized what situation I was in, how messy the kitchen was, how disgusting this finished product I created. And I got really sad. Um, I started to feel myself tear up a little bit. And actually, my dad came home right at that moment. And I thought he would be angry. This is the same man that wasn't satisfied if I got a 85 instead of a, you know, a 90. Same man who wanted me to excel at both arts and sports. And a guy who had a lot of high expectations for myself. But instead of being angry, he took a look at the messy kitchen, the eggshells on the floor, the overflowed liquid that spilled over on the stovetop. And he saw my bowl of noodles um, a little bit too dry uh, with the liquid all soaked up with a couple of scallions topping the top. And he took it and he ate all of it. And he said to me, Luke, this is one of my favorite things I've eaten recently. And I really hope you keep cooking. I hope you keep making things like this for me. And I just started crying. I, I couldn't control myself. And I realized that this food, this moment, and what my dad has said to me really is the reason why I start cooking. You know, I always say this, food is not about always what you're eating. It's about why you're cooking, who you're cooking for, and the inspiration, the stories that come before it. Someone made this recipe for my dad, and I tasted the love when he made the recipe for me. And although when he tasted my dish, it was salty, it was overdone, he also tasted that love. And that's why I'm inspired to cook. And I hope I can inspire you guys as well. So stick with me. I'm going to share with you guys a couple more recipes. Um, you can find the full recipe for this dish below. And I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.